Macular degeneration, or MD as it's sometimes called, affects our central vision. Our central vision allows us to drive a car, read, recognize faces, see colors clearly, and any other activity that requires fine detail vision. I used to go down to the beach and I used to be able to read without glasses at all. I'm short-sighted but used to be able to read in the sun without glasses and I noticed that the print was um, just not as clear as it had been so I then put on my, um, my ordinary glasses for short sight and within a couple of weeks I noticed that again the, the print was, was blurry. A couple of months later I was having lunch with some friends and they said that a friend of theirs, um, he was going to an ophthalmologist who um, was absolutely brilliant and why didn't I go along to see her. My mother, whose passion in life, apart from caring from the family of course, uh, was to read uh, and uh, she instilled that interest in other members of the family as well. She had had deteriorating eyesight for some considerable time uh, and had been seeing an ophthalmologist on a fairly regular basis, you know, every year or so or something like that. But there had been a steady deterioration and I said to Mother, I think we ought to go along and see Dr. So-and-so and so-and-so and have a chat with him again. So we did that uh, and he said, this is a very serious condition that has now developed and he said, I'm afraid there's nothing much we can do for your mother's eyesight, uh, which was pretty devastating for me. Not so much for her, because I think she'd become conditioned to it. But um, after appropriate examination and time passing, my mother had 2% sight. And I watched the effect of that on her and her ability to properly identify people and objects and uh, to enjoy the same kind of independence that I was used to seeing her enjoy so it had a profound effect upon me uh, and I know that it affected my mother greatly. One in seven New Zealanders over the age of 50 show evidence of macular degeneration. The incidence of MD rises even more sharply as you get older. One in four people over the age of 80 have vision loss from MD. The number of people with MD is expected to increase by over 70% by 2030. In fact, macular degeneration is the leading cause of vision loss in New Zealand with an estimated 170,000 people in the early stages of MD. MD is not a normal part of ageing and should never be ignored. In its early stages, macular degeneration may not cause any visual symptoms. It does not produce total or black blindness, but as it progresses, MD can lead to distortion, fuzziness, and ultimately complete loss of central vision. The eye is like a camera, with the retina like the film in the back of the eye. Light comes through the front of the eye and focuses the image onto the retina. The macula is the area at the very centre of the retina at the back of the eye. It's responsible for detailed central vision and most colour vision. Macular degeneration occurs when the centre of the retina is damaged. It's a condition that affects a special layer of cells in the eye called the retinal pigment epithelium, or RPE. The major role of the RPE is to nourish the retina and remove waste products. In early macular degeneration, waste products, called drusen, build up underneath the RPE. The drusen look like yellow spots and are what an optometrist or ophthalmologist would see when examining the back of the eye for early signs of macular degeneration. At this stage in early MD, the vision may still be normal, so this is why having your eyes tested is so important. There are two types of late MD. The first is dry MD, which generally results in a gradual reduction of central vision over many years. In its final stage, it can cause severe vision loss, even blindness. The second, more severe form of late MD is wet MD. Here, new blood vessels rapidly grow under the retina. The vessels may even break through the RPE, leaking fluid into the retina and bleeding. Without treatment, it causes scarring and rapid loss of central vision within weeks or months. Symptoms are blurred vision, 
patchy loss of central vision and distortion where straight lines become bent or wavy. Lois is a remarkable person who's had treatment for about five years now and she has required numerous treatments into her eye but those treatments have held her vision, she's still driving and still having a very active life. Well, it was nine and a half years ago and I was playing golf. Uh, I played a lot of golf in those days. And I was on the putting green and somebody held the, the pin up. And I thought that's strange and it was very wobbly like this. When, and I looked through another, the other eye and it was straight. So I had an idea, I knew something was wrong, but, um, and I thought it could have been macular degeneration because my sister had had it. We see a rather a, a mountain there formed and we can take layers, sections through the retina and we see the elevation. Underneath the retina there is a, a rather elevated area, the retina sitting on top. And then we see this deep area underneath what, the pigment epithelium, some fluid underneath the retina separating the retina from the rest of the layers and the blood vessels underneath. So this needs another treatment. There are three main risk factors for MD, age, genetics and smoking. Those with immediate family who have MD have a 50% chance of developing the condition. Smokers are three times more likely to get MD and it can occur up to 10 years earlier. Well, really we didn't know anything about MD and uh, mum was diagnosed around about when she was 84. She's now 90, she's 97 in two weeks. So, um, and she just noticed that she was blind in one eye or, or having difficulty seeing out of one eye. And I hadn't realized that smoking is such a, um, increases your risk significantly. And my 32 year old daughter is still struggling to give up cigarettes. So I certainly will be having a word with her about the fact that um, this could significantly impact on her later in life. And she's a portrait painter, so I'm quite sure she won't want to lose her sight or consider losing her sight. While there is no cure for MD, eating a well-balanced diet, making healthy lifestyle choices, and the use of certain vitamins and minerals can sometimes help reduce the risk of developing the disease and slow its progression. One of the most important developments for wet MD is that there are now treatment options available. The progression of wet MD can be dramatically slowed and vision can be saved. This is dependent on early diagnosis as early detection is crucial to prevent vision loss. So how can we reduce our risk of developing macular degeneration? Well we can't change our age and we can't change our genes but we can make some lifestyle changes and the most important of course is to be a non-smoker to stop smoking and then there are dietary changes so a diet that's rich in fresh fruit and vegetables now lutein is something which is found in particularly green vegetables and colored vegetables and the lutein is a pigment which is at the macula and we get this only by our diet and it protects our eyes from harmful light, particularly ultraviolet light. So really, it's really important to have plenty of lutein in our diet. Omega-3 in fish, oily fish, that's been shown to reduce the risk two to three times a week of um, fish. And we recommend a handful of nuts and a low fat diet. So I started with my first injection in December 2007 and had one then in January and I, to be honest, I actually didn't notice any difference in my sight and then I had the third injection and I was sitting with my boss and I caught him staring at me and I said, why are you looking at me? And he said, Viv, you're actually doing your shorthand without either your magnifying glass or your magic glasses. And it was the first time I began to get a little bit excited. And I had the fourth injection in March. And I knew that I could actually see so much more. Um, 
but at April she did the scan again and I had reached the level on the eye chart where I could once again drive and read the newspaper. And the retina that was all elevated is now nice and flat. This slight thinning at the centre here is normal as it should be. There's just some very mild changes underneath but basically this has all come back together and the layers are all in their normal position. I first noticed it a long time ago when on stage. When I came off stage, my, uh, my eyes didn't seem to be adjusting to moving out of a blackout or moving into a blackout. So I went to my specialist and he diagnosed it. And since then, um, I get large print books and I've just got a Kindle. And uh, you can punch up the type size, whatever size you want on the Kindle, so that's helpful. Um, other than that, I don't really need to compensate. I wear dark glasses out in the, in the bright light because bright light is not very good. Well, I think when you first diagnose, it's a nasty shock. You think, oh God, any minute now I'm going to be blind, but that doesn't happen, or very. I mean, it will happen to some people eventually, but it gives them a bit of a time to, to get ready for it and to prepare, and to prepare your relations, your friends, um, organize your living arrangements make things easier to see and to deal with um, and then compensate as much as you can and it, it, it's not as bad as it sounds. I cannot stress the importance of taking a second opinion and if they're not happy with that second opinion then they must take a third because for everyone there is hope in some form or another. Someone who has macular degeneration or has early signs of macular degeneration may find it hard to notice any change or to monitor their vision. And a really useful tool for monitoring their vision is an Amsler grid. Using the Amsler grid is simple. Use your reading glasses, cover one eye and look only at the dot in the centre. Are all the lines straight and do the square boxes look square? Are there any black, grey or fuzzy patches? If the lines do not appear straight or you can see black, grey or fuzzy patches, please contact an eye care professional. Someone with wet macular degeneration, for example, might notice that some of the lines are a bit bent, curved. They might notice some little patches missing or they not, might notice quite a dark patch. The Amsler grid is a simple way to check for signs of MD, but it shouldn't take the place of seeing your optometrist or your eye care professional for a regular checkup, including a macular check. I'm not able to read very small print easily, and uh, most of the problems I have can be um, fixed by some sort of adjustment, either lighting or using a, uh, I've got a small magnifying glass, but it's things like um, recipe books, and I like cooking, uh, that have no contrast and there's a, a lovely book out at the moment which was given to me and I find it so difficult to read. It's sort of pale green on pale lemon and there's just no contrast and that's hopeless. Macular degeneration is an active area of scientific research and there's new drugs going to be coming on board all the time so that's very exciting. And these, this research is giving us information that's helping us understand the whole process of macular degeneration. It's going to give us new treatments, new ways of delivering the treatment, and it may even repair some of the changes that have already happened. So it used to be that we would see people with macular degeneration and we would say, look, I'm sorry, there's nothing more we can do. So there's a feeling out there that really macular degeneration is an ageing process and there's nothing you can do about it. In fact, just yesterday I had a patient who came in here and we talked about it. I diagnosed her with macular degeneration and she said, um, well, OK, but there is nothing you can do about that, is there? And I think there's a lot of people, that's what they think, and it's really important that they understand that now there are some treatments. It is important to know that one can live with macular degeneration. There are so many low vision aids available to assist. Um, there are just the magnifying glasses, but there is help with your oven, with your telephone, with your computer. 
The important thing, I think, is to know that these or this help is available. And it is available from low vision optometrists or it is available from the Royal New Zealand Foundation of the Blind. I think the, the key message for me is that people ought to be told that they need not be afraid. Macular degeneration may well become part of people's lives, but we can live with it. Don't be frightened. You have to talk to professionals to have a proper diagnosis. You go to your optician, you go to your ophthalmologist, but there are persons who will help you professionally and they will help you to live with this particular condition. Don't be afraid. You can live with it. For a free Amsler grid, information on your nearest eye care professional, or for more information on ways in which MD can be slowed down or treated, please contact Macular Degeneration New Zealand today.